Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News, where we try to muddle through fun satellite connections today. And uh, so we might freeze. Hard to tell. I'm going to turn my text message off here. So welcome, Pat. What's my rate? McMaster's Jackie Smith from Century 21 Arizona Foothills and Ruby, who is boots on the ground today. Stop buzzing around. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Now. Now, Ruby, just to be clear, boots on the ground doesn't mean that you're looking for actual boots on the ground. We just wanted to <laughs> clear that up. So, yeah. well, so, right, you know, right. Yeah. You know, because I keep seeing you driving and going like this, and, I, and that's not what it means. But uh, um, I thought we'd take a quick look, and, you know, so long as we're still connected, right? Jeez. Um, yeah. And try to think what do we think the fall is going to be like based on any numbers that we're tracking right now? And on my seven day moving average, we can take a little jog back in the uh, way back machine here. See that red line. Mm -hmm. That's last year. So we do go down in July, just like we did this year in listings and in sales, although we're considerably lower in sales than we were last year, but then it starts to go up again, just like it's going up now. And it muddles along until you get to fall, and then it starts to drop before you get to the holidays. And then, of course, it falls off the cliff. But so that's kind of where we're at from a seven day moving average. And right now, when we look at our listing success rate, it's starting to come down again. You know, it was 119. So I think we have to say, yeah, it's, it's not just seasonal. It, it was just really hot. And what line and was the looked, blue line, Rick? What year was the, the blue, blue line? line was uh, 2021. Okay. That was that the sense. silly season. So, yeah. And this, this was 2022 rates went up down. We went. So, so it's, I'm kind of just trying to only look at where it's trending. So it's trending down, but it's not alarming. The listing success rate averages around 65% and we're sitting here at 79. So we're fine, but it just, I'm looking at where it's trending. And then I look and monthly average sales price. Look at that. We're back to where we started. But Cromford did say here, what jumps out at you is the average price recorded in closing is now higher than at any time in the past. The correction over the last 12 months is now complete. At the same time, the average size of homes closed has increased. That surprised me. So the me same too. chart for average dollars per square foot has not accomplished a complete recovery of the ground lost during mid-22. And he said, we should point out that new homes made a big contribution to the health of this chart. If we only count resale transactions, then the full recovery has not yet been achieved. So I went and looked today, and we have today, I think it was 1,400 homes pending. 30% of those are new builds. Wow. That's a pretty... I believe it hefty number. If we take a quick look at listings under contract, you can see that they're up, down, up, down, up, down, but trending slightly lower, but then kind of coming back up last week. So nothing trending there too bad. This one here is list price versus sales price. That's not what I was really looking at. I want to look at the ratio here. So it's 98.3. So people are getting their list price so far. So when I look at that, um, the only thing that's jumping out that says that overall our market is slowing is the Cromford Market Index measuring supply and demand. And it is starting to turn a little bit. So I don't see anything coming in to make that um, accelerate and go back the other way unless for some reason we do get some relief in rates. But I don't know how likely that is. And the market's been pretty sticky hasn't it pat yeah it has been that's your cue and we've seen uh up, yep that's my cue yep today throw on the chart there they uh you know yeah today at five and a half people i was down 17 basis at this point the u.s treasury's been ticking around four four uh, 4.12 so, i mean we're just obviously we're just really working against the feds right now, seeing what the you know, CPI numbers come out uh, next week. So it's just been, we're stuck in this channel. 
Yeah, I, it's amazing. Even when you look at some of the, you know, the big guys reporting, you know, you got Mortgage Bankers Association is still sticking to their guns and saying 5.9 by the end of the year. But boy, that just looks more and more unlikely to me. Um, yeah, I mean, the Ruby, expect, I mean, the expectations of federal. I mean, the, the expectations are going to hike again. Obviously, if they do, the mortgage rates look like they're going to probably go a little higher short term. But I think we'll see some relief after this. Looking at September, October. I, do you I don't think know the if you downgrading guys saw credit. Hmm? Yeah, I, it, it, the downgrading credit that, that isn't really going to affect mortgage markets, is it, Pat? No, I, I mean it really did. The news came out; it really did not. I mean, the market was down yesterday, but I mean it didn't affect it as much as you think it was. It really didn't. I mean, it was um, news came out, and it was kind of like the bonds were trading, just trading like is, you know. So yeah, they're they're it they're did, used uh, to gloomy news. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They must be watching it. you. Too. I mean, right now, you know, we'll have to wait till see what the inflation reading is next, you know, next week. Um, you know, there's just, I think there's going to be short term volatility. You're going to see these short term swings within the market. I mean, we're seeing seven and eight, seven and a quarter right now with rates. Yeah, could they go higher? But I don't know how much, how much higher they could really go without really stifling more, more, de- you know, more demand. Well, I think they could stifle more demand because I think, uh, uh, you know, I mean, like we, you and I talked about last week, Pat, you know, there's, there's more about rates and inflation than just the housing market. So I think, uh, you know, the potential for it going up higher is still there, but I, yeah. you know, all I can do is watch. There's an interesting article on Yahoo Finance from Bloomberg that said, and this is kind of what you've been saying too, Pat and Jackie, you mentioned this a while back, U.S. homeowners are nearly twice as willing to sell if their mortgage rate is 5% or higher. So if they're sitting on a 5% or higher rate right now, they're more willing to sell than everybody else. But just one in five mortgage homes meet that criteria. So there's a bunch of people out there that said, well, I'm willing to sell because I'm holding a note above five, but there aren't very many of us. And that's not the problem. Right. That's, That's the problem. Ruby, you've got a few listings that have come up, and uh, you said you had some buyers that actually got under contract for a new build this weekend. Do you know what kind of rate they got? Oh, we lost that Ruby, a, right? That would right be in her queue. <laughs> that was right there. So she was so, lying, so she dropped off. No, well, I asked I, her a hard question, and boom, she's gone. So, so we got to renegotiate actually, that contract. I'm telling you, I know so. those darn M and M's. So I can kind of um, give you the scoop on that since we're partners and I somewhat know what's going on. Um, we do have, and, and I'm, I'm seeing this, we've got um, quite a few new listings, I think uh, four, five, and um, a couple of them are due to job losses. Uh, we had a couple gentlemen that bought homes just to, just this last year, actually, one of the listings we just took just closed in May, and he's having to sell. And the reason being is they both work for the same company, and the company closed. And so they are both moving out of state. And they, they worked for a company where they were going to be running sober living homes. So one of the houses we listed in uh, Tolleson was a... Um, four bedroom when it was originally bought he converted it to a seven bedroom so we've got a seven bedroom available we're getting decent activity that's hard to find so if anybody is looking to run a sober living or a care facility both these houses would fit perfectly the other gentleman same thing it was supposed to be a uh, sober living home and they worked for the same company it closed uh, another person that we listed her home out in Rio Verde that's for 995,000 gorgeous house in the town of Rio Verde, right on the golf course, uh, has a private pool house is gorgeous. The house is too big for her. She's by herself and she's in like a 3,200 square foot house, beautiful home, but it's just too big. So, and then, uh, Ruby, I was filling him in on the, the new listings you have, but if, since you're back, if you want to talk about the current buyers you have, um, well, I don't have any current buyers except for one <laughs> you just I got one under contract. 
Yeah, just on Sunday under a new build. So I'm one of the 30% um, new builds under contract. So, yeah. And then you probably said, I'm sorry, you guys, my phone overheated and just shut down. It's that hot out. So can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So then the, um, then you may have already told them that our, we put our post listing active and the very next day we had two days later, we had it under contract. So it's our market's moving well for us. I didn't, I didn't get to that one yet. I was talking about the two care facilities and the Fountain Hills home. Oh yeah. Okay. So post was uh, priced at three eighty five. We had a four bedroom in surprise for under four hundred thousand. That just got stomped all over the place. We had so many showings on that thing, and it went under contract the first weekend. Well, Fountain Hills and Chandler are leading the pack when it comes to the CMI. So um, Fountain Hills must be just because the inventory is pretty low this time of year. But uh, um, so if you're surprising. listing Fountain Hills. Well, our Fountain Hills is not actually... season. What's that, Ruby? I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Um, the ha our listing out in um, is not technically in Fountain Hills. It's in the um, small town of Rio Verde. It's not in. It's off of an adult community golf course, master plan community. What's their water supply out there? Do they have a well? No. Yeah, they actually, they their water comes from Epcor, so it's not um, affected at all. Okay. Okay, because I know some and of them out there were struggling. And green and beautiful. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not all the horse properties and the large custom homes. It's a master plan community, been there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, nice. Well, I yeah. think, so tell me, uh, Pat, where do you think the fall market's going to be when we get into uh, the fourth quarter? I mean, our volume's low, but do you think we'll stay here? I think more the same. Just muddling along. I, I don't see anything that's going to be pushing on my end unless rates start really kind of coming down. They give people a, a reason to make a move on my end. Yeah, yeah. that's why I kind of said we got a fall chill coming because, you know, we, we've, we've got the uh, um, interest rates are probably going to stay about where they are, but seasonally it slows down anyway. So unless we get another kind of a change, it's going to, you know, continue to be slow. So mm -hmm. we're popping in I, and out of here like, you know, a, like that whack-a-mole game at the carnival. So <laughs> All the kids yeah. back to school and they're on their devices now. I just had three clients that put off looking uh, all at the same time due to interest rates. So, and I just got notified from one of mine this morning um, that he's holding off for a year also. He was coming from overseas and now he's going to wait and rent for a year. You know, I hear that a lot. They're going to wait a year or they're going to wait two years. I don't hear anybody permanently giving up. So that, no. it again, shows you that pent-up demand that's out there. And, and uh, you know, there's the demand is there. And the last time we saw rates at 5.5, we saw the buyers come out of the woodwork. So uh, we, I just don't know when they're going to get back to 5.5. And it could take a year. Um, I don't saw even another think it's... I was going to say, I don't even think it's going to take 5.5 for them to come back. I think if we hit the low sixes, they're back. Yeah, I think so. The Probably not at the okay. same velocity. But yeah, that's that's a yeah. shame. I was going to show you guys that Phoenix considers zoning think, changes that would allow full dwelling units in residential backyards. That's a big deal for Phoenix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they have grandfathered those for a long time. If you had um, a guest house and you wanted to remodel a place, you could remodel a guest house, but you couldn't add one. So now they're going to consider whether or not they want to do that. And that's, uh, I'm not sure where that's going to end up, but that would be a game changer for some neighborhoods up there, especially Absolutely. along Central Avenue. So. Oh, yeah. And if you did have a guest house and wanted to remodel it, and you were doing it the right way and pulling permits, the only way you could do it, you could not have a kitchen in it. So, for instance, um, unless you could get a caretaker's letter from a doctor for a family member, that was the only way you could get around having the kitchen. So, because wow, I knew I quite a few people that. that had, yeah, I knew quite a few people that had to actually take kitchens out to redo electrical and plumbing and get permits for it 
get past um, all the inspections with zoning and then they put the kitchen in afterwards and then i i've sold a few like that and we had to notify people that you know if you go to resell this you may have to take the kitchen out oh jeez what a pain uh, what a pain yeah. well um so next week is cpi come out next week pat we got we got the we got the bls numbers coming out friday so we got uh we're cutting out pat was saying we got the bureau of labor statistics coming up so so, well, look, I'm going to cut this short so that we don't drive people too, too nuts. And uh, we will get back next week with a much better connection. We will record earlier in the morning before the kiddos suck up all the bandwidth. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. Everybody have right. a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Right, Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.